How's it going guys? It's Cole from See Through Panel showing off Refrigerator Full of Heads published by DC Black Label under the Hill House Comics imprint and retailing for $25 US. Before we get too deep into it, I'm not going to be spoiling anything. I'm actually going to be specifically very light on spoilers because I want this book to be read by more people. Um, so just going to be talking about what I liked about it. It should be a pretty quick video. Um, yeah, just going to be going over the basics and why it's a great book. Um, before we get too deep, let's do the credits as well. This book is written by Rio Ewers, who I have never heard of before, Tom Fowler, who I adore, uh, inks by Tom Fowler and Craig A. Taylor. Bill Crabtree does the colors and World Design does the letters. It does have a dust jacket that is semi-transparent, which is interesting. Um, and here's the interior art on the board. I'm actually kind of happy to have that dust jacket off. Um, this is a sequel to Basket Full of Heads. Why, why is that so hard for me to remember? The original Joe Hill book. Uh, I actually have it right next to me. Let me pull it out. Uh, the original Joe Hill book with Leo Max on art. Um, from the original line of the Hill House comics, this is kind of the second wave that this one came out in. Very similar uh, production, actually, with the books. Same size, similar painted interior art or painted art on the cover board. Um, I loved Basket Full of Heads. I thought it was a great book. Um, honestly, Refrigerator Full of Heads... No, I'll say they're about equal. They're both fantastic. They're about equal. One does something a little more um, subversively. Basket Full of Heads is a little bit deeper, more um, emotional story, kind of a more intricate plot. Um, still very much a slasher kind of genre. When you when I say these are horror books, I don't mean they're Island Wars from Hell or something like that. They're not thrillers in that way. They're more slashers. They're more of a serial killer kind of um, horror movie with gore rather than suspense and, and kind of like giving you the chills and things like that. No, it's more violence, schlock, uh, really in your face. Um, especially Refrigerator Full of Heads is even more so. I think Basket Full of Heads tends to be a bit more subversive, a bit more subtle, whereas Refrigerator Full of Heads is a... If Basket Full of Heads was a 10 out of 10 in terms of the, um, the impact and the um, kind of showing you things you don't expect to see, Refrigerator Full of Heads takes that to 11. It's going to be off the wall balls to the wall, just action and things you are not expecting to see out of a supposed horror book. It is insane, has almost superhero levels of kind of insanity and twists and fantastical happenings, whereas Basket Full of Heads tends to be fairly grim and gritty, aside from the magical axe that is kind of the uh, device used to propel both stories, where if you cut someone's head off with the axe... Um, they will stay alive. Their head will still be kind of alive and talking and thinking and moving if possible. I won't say anything other than that about the story. They're two very different stories. There is a link between the two of them, but they can both definitely be enjoyed separately from each other. There is no real need to read either one, although if you have the option, I would recommend reading them in order, Basket Full of Heads and then Refrigerator Full of Heads. Um, in terms of the art, Tom Fowler is killing it on this book. I think he does a fantastic job. I think Crabtree is coloring his heart out here. In terms of aesthetics, I think it's absolutely nailed. Hard to follow up Leo Max on the original series. This, I don't want to say is better, but to me, I think it works um, perfectly for what Rio Ewers... I hope I'm saying that right. Here's the spelling in case I'm not. Rio Ewers? It, it's spelled Ewers, so... Um, it is drawn exactly to the tone that I think Rio Ewers is writing for, where things are very overdone, very clear and visible, very played up. There's a lot of um, emotion in the, the character acting in the faces. Um, this is probably the densest page you're going to get out of this entire book. This kind of uh, intimidated me, and it was very slow, but this is just getting all of the groundwork laid out. And then after that, you're having more pages like this with three or four word balloons and a lot of action. Um, I just love Tom Fowler's characters. I think they are so expressive 
I think his line is so um, clean yet distinct and almost sloppy in the sense that nothing looks pristine. This doesn't look like a Mobius work. Everything looks... There's some grime to everything, but yet it is very clean. It's really hard for me to explain. Um, these lines are put down so precisely, but they don't really look pristine in the way. I'm going to give up on this point because I don't know how to elaborate enough. I can't explain myself enough, so there's no point. I, what I'm saying is I love Tom Fowler's art. I think it's perfect for the story Rio Ewers is telling, and the story Rio Ewers is telling is a continuation of Joe Hill's story, but um, with an added level of silliness. Um, it still has that deep uh, emotional impact at certain moments. It resonates well. The characters are well fleshed out. It works as a sequel like the Scream sequels work or the uh, Friday the 13th sequels or anything like that but a good version of that, not the bad ones, the good ones. So it's working in that sense where it continues these characters' legacy and kind of brings them in a little bit, but they are not the central focus. They're not the focal point of the entire story. They're just there in the backdrop telling you, hey, we're in the same world, we're in a similar place, um, time is the difference, and then our main characters is also the difference. Um, they cut a shark. This isn't really a spoiler. I'm not going to spoil too much here, but... Um, they cut a shark's head off with the axe. Also, I love... I can't tell if this is lettered on the page, like on the board that uh, Tom Fowler is doing. I think it probably is. Because Anne Wolf Design would have to... This seems like an uh, an overreach for the letterer, unless Rio you were spe specifically told him to do this. Uh, but yeah, they cut a shark's head off. And it just is chomping. I love the letters there. Um... I'm going to get to some spots that you might say it's a bit of a spoiler. I'm going to try and give literally no context uh, and just kind of show you. I love this head. This guy's got his head cut off by the axe, so he's still alive. And he gets on a... He's just on a journey to try and... Oh, look at that cover. That's a beautiful... Mariah Wolf or Maria Wolf. I'm not sure which. Uh, I don't know who that is, but this is a beautiful cover. Um, yeah, this guy got his head chopped. And he is uh, truly one of the goofiest characters with the funniest arcs and um, ends up playing a bigger role than you'd expect. He's a really fun, really fun character. So we have basically two... It took me forever to get to this point of the video, I'm sorry. We have two main protagonists that seem to be partners. They seem to be like something like cops. They're doing fishy stuff, like writing down a bunch of license plates on a notepad when they're checking out the new city. Um, so we think they're probably, like, with the government or cops or something, investigating this stolen relic, Norse relic. Um, and they're here to... We don't really know what they're here to do, but they get caught up in all of the stuff on Rhodey Island. Um, and I'm not going to say much more. It gets, it's, gets batshit insane. I'm just going to flip through some pages. Um, it very much is a lot different than the first series in terms of the scope. Um, it expands the scope of the first series by a lot. And it, a lot of world building done. Um, I can't say a ton without really doing much more than, or saying more than I should. But I'll just, I'll just show it off. So if you're worried about visual spoilers, I would stop here. But, uh, that's not something you would see in the first story. Definitely not. My dog is sighing in the background. Uh, yeah, so it gets a little bit more fantasy, a little bit more imaginative, less grounded. But uh, it is just drawn to all hell by Tom Fowler. It's just amazing. Go back to those pages just for a sec here. But yeah, I wanted to keep this one short because uh, there's not a lot I can say that I just repeated myself for about 10 minutes, but... Not a lot that I can say without spoiling it, and I think more people should read this. I hope the Hill House imprint isn't done for. Uh, I haven't really heard a lot of uh, news coming out from them since their second wave, which I think was mostly just like this book and maybe like one other or two others. Um, I really want more horror books. I read this, I mean, it's way too late now. It's mid-November. I read it in October because it was the Halloween spirit, but uh, things got a little uh, ahead of me, and I uh, took a while to make this video, but... 
In uh, conclusion, didn't really talk about this. Read this one first if you can, but I mean, you don't have to. Refrigerator Full of Heads is a absolutely insane goes to 11 slasher horror flick that is just crazier than you could imagine it to be, to be honest. Uh, working off the world that Joe Hill made in Basketful of Heads, but um, taking it to a level that no one could expect, and I'm sure even Joe Hill, when he read the script, was uh, flabbergasted. I would have to imagine that someone would read Basketful of Heads and go, I'm going to make a sequel about that, and it's going to be Refrigerator Full of Heads, and it, it's going to be what this, whatever this turned out to be, because it's just wild, absolutely wild. I guess I'll show you an internal page from Leo Max. A lot different. A lot more um, ink. I would say, like, a lot more spotted blacks. Uh, very matte. Also, I say we'll say the production on these books is really nice. Really matte paper. Um, toothy. Um, yeah, but, I mean, just off the wall. Everything's a lot more dulled down. Tom Fowler's art looks shiny. You know what I'm saying? Everything looks... There's a lot of light playing. A lot of tones. And maybe it's Crabtree's colors as well. But I'm just kind of rambling at this point. Read this. It's fantastic. Tell me other books like this. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.